You mind how your head feel? The fact that black hair is one, like leads the trend for other people's hairstyles, number one, right? But is so wildly inventive and creative in the face of that restrictive hold placed onto it, um, sort of brings that significance of black hair, the history of it and the current moment of it into perspective, at least for me, because of the things that black people do, of the ways that black people resist globally, we see it. One of the most clearest forms of it is in our hair. I just have such vivid memories of even from before I was even getting my hair done like that, when I was a little girl of going to the salon with my mom and just being surrounded by all these black women just talking, listening to music, talking about their life experiences, gossiping, you know, whatever the case may be. And I'm just sitting there as a little girl and they would kind of tell me things like, oh, when you grow up. So it was really just a space for just like fostering community. It almost was like my mom would tell me that she felt like getting her hair done was kind of like a therapy session because she could talk to her hairstylist about whatever and also get her hair done at the same time. I would say my, my hair has definitely been a very big part of my identity. It always has. Hence the way the barbershop has always been an instrumental place of growth. Uh, meditation, wisdom, and learning for me. And we have such diverse ways across the gender spectrum that we show our own love for ourselves. I know we are supposed to think that we're not our physical appearances, but when you have hair that stands out like natural hair does, that defies gravity, that makes a statement in every space that you walk into, and that really just says, I'm going to accept who I am, and the way my hair grows out of my hair naturally, it says a lot, and it's it's very powerful. As a symbol of responsibility to black people. As a symbol of responsibility to black people. Finding a place to get my hair done out here has actually been like really, really hard. And I think there's a lot of barriers to entry, like especially financially, because the only place that I found that does weaves in the surrounding Palo Alto area charges $250 an install. And that's just not reasonable. For students, for black students, we just don't have time to take care of ourselves in that way. You have to go out of your way. You have to make the decision to prioritize your hair, which naturally means that other things will be put under them. I mean, you can search like black hairstylists, like Palo Alto, and there are like a couple of things that pop up. I literally go to Berkeley to get my hair done. Like that's an hour drive. And so I recognize that, you know, not everyone can even do that. It's a real struggle. It's a struggle because I, sometimes I got to decide, I'm like, am I going to take these three, four hours to just sit and do my hair or am I going to study for this final? Doing my own hair, is time consuming. And you know what you don't have much of when you're a Stanford student? Time. <laughs> so I am spending so much of my time doing my hair. It's becoming stressful. It's starting to get in the way of work. So many people would reach out to me. It was crazy. This one time, like people that I didn't even know were texting me. I didn't know how they got my number, but emailing me. I, I heard through the grapevine that you do hair. Will you be available to do my twist, my box braids? I was overwhelmed very quickly. The demand went up. It, it just it was just too much for me. And that's when I had to shut everything down. I understand that there's a need, but like I gotta put myself first. So I came here and there's only one barbershop near campus um, that practically everybody would go to, but it's more expensive here as well. In Ohio, we pay $10 for a haircut. Here, base is 25. So initially my first haircut, I was very uneasy about it. It was a new barber, it was a new place. <laughs> I, did, he, I don't know if he really understood what I wanted either. So I decided to, my friend had clippers actually. Um, I, don't, I don't know why he actually had them, but I decided to ask him like, yo, can I borrow these? Um, and I'll watch some YouTube videos, YouTube channels, and then I'll watch maybe three videos a day. And then the next day, I'll cut my friend Mama do. I initially planned on just cutting my hair. But then like when so many people start coming to me, I recognized that like it was a, a need, almost a dire need on campus where people would go weeks without getting their hair cut because it was so expensive to get to a barbershop, pay for the haircut, then get back. Um, and like these were my friends as well. So like just that friendship 
made me like be a little bit more lenient towards like, oh yeah, I can sacrifice an hour out of the day for you. And right now, I would say I probably cut 10 to 12 heads a week. Um, total of clients is maybe about um, 33, 33 guys on campus, um, including like two girls on campus. I do like the undercut as well. I am a computer science student, and like sometimes I find trouble like doing my P set at night or something, and I'll just like have to stay up late. So it's like a kind of like a balance thing because I don't want to do this like as a career, but I also like want to make some money at the moment. It's very special. It's bonding, really. It's time for you, for you guys to bond. Okay, my dear, 872 is your phone. We opened in 93, and at that time, I could count maybe five. But now, I've seen a change in the last, I would say maybe within the last 10 years, five to 10 years, that it's almost, it's vanishing, that black presence. Uh, Salon-wise, here in San Jose, in this area, there are a few, but there are not a lot. And as far as black beauty supply stores, I think there are two in this region that I know of. And we're talking about from San Francisco, the entire Bay Area to San Jose, I know of two. One of my major reservations, because you know, I, I believe that I wouldn't have any problem when, it, when it's time to put it on the market or whatever, is that if we close, if we are not here, there may not be a black presence. And it does bother me, I, I must honestly say, because there, as I said, when I started, there were more, and now there are two that I know of that are black owned. And you know, that's, this is, this is us. To me, this is, this is our culture. For me, the barbershop has been a space that definitely is one that is completely culture, full of conversations that are like typical for black males growing up. But it's like, it's this weird preparation for the anti-black, super white world that I'm just gonna go into as a black male. One that won't give any leeway. Being integral um, to mental health for me and my black experiences, sometimes being able to just be who I am and be able to go into a space of people that actually look completely like me and get the feedback from them and see how they're taking things in the same way. And that's kind of like a strength in numbers, but it also ends up teaching me a lot of things I want to learn otherwise. Being here and not having that space, it, it, it's just awful. There's no other feeling. There's no other feeling of like sitting um, like before someone and knowing that they, like they know exactly um, what you're going through. And when you have a community that like makes it normal, um, it makes it special and it, it preserves how special that is. This environment on a whole in so many ways makes black people feel like a burden in general. And I think that that comes through in so many different ways, but absolutely in terms of our hair.